Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris with The Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well today. So what I'd like to talk about is pre-hospital airway management implications for patients experiencing uh, severe COVID-19 uh, signs and symptoms, specifically patients who are, are experiencing or have experienced acute respiratory failure and uh, require advanced airway management. Uh, so as a preamble to the video proper, I just want to go over uh, some of the uh, current or contemporary evidence. And I wanna be very clear that I am in no way recommending that you practice a specific way or that you deviate outside of whatever protocols or clinical practice guidelines may be in place for your specific institution or your specific department. These are simply observations and these are some suggestions and perhaps some tools that might help uh, if they get implemented into your formal clinical practice guidelines. So I wanna be very clear there that I am in no way telling people to change uh, whatever practice they currently do. All right, so to preamble all of, all, all of that, I just wanna say or reiter reiterate that in many cases, people are recommending that we intubate patients experiencing acute respiratory distress or respiratory failure early. Uh, in many cases, when we have patients with respiratory failure um, and they are awake and oriented enough to manage their airway and their secretions, a lot of times what we'll do both outside of the hospital and in, in the hospital is we will implement some non-invasive strategy. And non-invasive strategies are fairly effective. They can decrease the incidence of, of intubation and they can um, help get people out of the hospital sooner and or, or more quickly get them discharged uh, out of ICU, out of the hospital. So there are really good reasons why we might want to employ non-invasive ventilation. And I'm talking about modalities such as CPAP, BiPAP, high flow nasal cannula, et cetera. The problem that we we're running into is these particular modalities can increase the risk of aerosolization or aerosolization of respiratory droplets. And that inherently becomes a substantial infection control risk. So um, employing those particular tools may need to be done in a very different way when it comes to managing a critically ill COVID-19 patients. Um, my my uh, inclination is to avoid those therapeutics and probably just look at early intubation of these patients in respiratory failure. That's kind of where I'm at right now, looking at all of the, the, the contemporary evidence that's available. Okay, so when it comes to managing these patients, uh, we've already established they're probably gonna be intubated they may need uh, advanced airway management. So we'll start with that in place. That I have a patient, I have placed an endotracheal tube, and for the most part, and again, this video is going to be focused more on the pre-hospital implications than in-hospital implications. Uh, for the most part, I think most of us should be, if, if we're not, are employing uh, some sort of carbon dioxide uh, monitoring modality. Um, on all patients with advanced airway, um, advanced airway adjuncts or devices that have been placed, and that is no different here, right? So I have a mainstream waveform capnography device, a waveform a CO2 detecting device, right? And this is kind of the standard thing that we run into. I've got my bag valve mask, I've got the patient intubated, I've got a commercial securing device, and I'm monitoring carbon dioxide for not only for verification of proper placement of the device, but I can look at my uh, waveform and that can help me with certain diagnostics such as a bronchospasm and air trapping and uh, other, other problems uh, diagnostically. Okay, that's all well and good. However, there are a few things I wanna talk about. And the first of which is going to be just a safety. This is a, a, just a basic infection control modality. We know that aerosolization, respiratory droplets, and respiratory droplets is the primary way 
that the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus is spread. So what can we do as providers to prevent that, right? To prevent community spread. Well, something I would recommend if you don't use this in your service, something that I would highly recommend is something like this. And this is what's referred to as a HEPA filter. And a HEPA filter is, is essentially, it's a, it's a high efficiency filter that can filter out uh, some of or, or most, much of the uh, viruses, or in, depending on the patient, it could be a bacteria, but obviously we're most concerned about a virus, right? So it works essentially like a little filter. And so what you do is you just take that and you attach that onto the end of the device. It has a 15 millimeter, a 15 millimeter adapter, so it will adapt to your standard 15 um, millimeter um, adapter that you see on endotracheal tubes or superglottic, extraglottic airways. It just attaches like so. And then you can even put your carbon dioxide detecting modality as well, and then attach the back valve mask. And then you can begin ventilating, right? And so the air goes in. And then as that patient exhales, most important for us, as that patient exhales, it's gonna go through this HEPA filter and then it's gonna come out, let me just bend this down. This is the exhalation port of the back valve mask. So the air will come out, go through the HEPA filter, and then come out, right? Because when you're bagging somebody, everything that's coming out of their lungs, essentially, the, the air that's coming out of their lungs, their airways, um, is coming out of that exhalation port and getting sprayed throughout the back of the ambulance, and you're in a very secure, uh, isolated area, right? So that's a, that's a pretty substantial infection control risk. All right, so that's the first thing that I would really strongly suggest. The next thing that I would, would uh, also talk about is the fact that because these patients, these, these critical patients develop a respiratory failure, uh, the cause of respiratory failure is often a, an ARDS or an ARDS-like picture. That's acute respiratory distress syndrome. We know that a very important or critical modality for managing patients with ARDS is PEEP. That's positive end expiratory pressure. That's pressure that's always in the airways. It's pressure that you're exhaling against, right? And it kind of opens the alveoli, it recruits them, it keeps them open, it splints them, it increases oxygenation, and it is a very important component of managing these patients. Now, I understand that many of us do not have complex ventilators, right? Because that's the ideal situation is to have this patient attached to a ventilator where I can provide more complex respiratory support to these patients and including things like PEEP and other modalities. Uh, but for a standard transport, right? If I'm a, a paramedic and I'm doing a standard paramedic level transport, I may not have access to a sophisticated ventilator, what is another option? Well, that other option is something called a PEEP valve. So what a PEEP valve is, and I'll just see if I can close in on this, is it is a little, a little, little one-way valve, and it's, I don't know if you can see in here, but there's a little spring, and this is spring-loaded. And so what happens is this valve will only open when a certain amount of pressure Right? You have to actually push into this with a certain amount of pressure and then it'll open and allow air to escape. And so what you can do is, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but each of these little lines here, five centimeter, uh, five centimeters of water pressure lines. And so what I can do is if I want five centimeters of pressure, I can put that at five if I want to go to 10. I'll screw that down to the 10 mark. So that's at 10 all the way up here. That's five, that first, first black mark up there, five, 10, 15, and so on, right? And that actually increases the amount of pressure in centimeters of water that you have to push to open that exhalation valve. So what you can do is you can take that and you can attach this to the exhalation port of your bag valve mask. And then what happens is, as that patient is exhaling, the air that's coming out of that patient is gonna go through the BVM, 
the back valve mass. It's going to go in through the exhalation port. It's going to come into this P valve, and it's going to come up against that that little valve there, and that valve won't open until the pressure is at whatever the setting is. And so essentially what you're doing is you're providing PEEP for that patient, right? Um, and that is a very simple way of providing PEEP by just simply putting a PEEP valve on the back valve mask, and now you can provide PEEP to that patient and provide additional respiratory support. All right, so that's the second thing the second modality that we might want to employ. The other modality is another infection control consideration, and that is typically in an EMS context, if I need to suction this airway out, I need to disconnect my bag valve mask, or the bag valve mask, I need to disconnect it, I need to open this patient's ventilatory circuit, and then I need to insert uh, typically a flexible suction catheter into the patient's airway and suction out. So this is, this is problematic for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is because these patients may be very PEEP dependent, right? If I break that circuit, I lose that PEEP, right? And that can be deleterious. And the other thing is I'm breaking the circuit and now I'm increasing the risk of in I'm increasing the infection hazard risk, right? So this is a, an infectious substance risk or infection control risk as well. So what I would recommend is if you have any sort of relationship with a hospital, the respiratory department, if you're able to access something that looks like this, this is something that's referred to as an inline suction system, a closed suction system, or some people will call these a Ballard Ballard system. Uh, Ballard, I believe, is actually a trade name for a specific brand. Um, so this is what we refer to as an inline or closed suction system. So the way that this works, if I take it out of here, is it has a suction catheter built into it, and then this just attaches to your, your suction system, and then you depress that and then that activates the suction. So that's kind of like putting your thumb over the hole. You just push it in. And you see it's fully enclosed. The suction catheter is fully enclosed in the sheath here. And so what you do is, this gets, this is a 15 millimeter adapter. This gets attached to the distal end of the endotracheal tube, like so. You can see that. And then you can attach your bag valve mask, or your ventilator for that matter, on the elbow end. So your bag valve mask will be attached here. This will become attached to the endotracheal tube. And then what you can do is you can continue ventilating that patient with the bag valve mask while at the same time you can suction them. So you can insert the suction catheter into the endotracheal tube. You can initiate your suctioning like so, and you don't ever have to break the ventilator circuit. The entire system remains intact, right? So you can kind of see it here. I've got my bag valve mask with a PEEP valve. I've got my carbon dioxide monitoring modality. I've got a HEPA filter to protect myself. And now I have the inline suction system, and you can see I can insert that and then I can suction secretions out of that patient without ever having to break this system. And there you go. So these are the three modalities, or additional modalities that I wanted to talk about. Um, the addition of a HEPA filter, which I believe is critical for infection control. This is absolutely critical. We need to have HEPA filter. The use of PEEP valve to provide therapeutic PEEP and the use or the employment of an inline suction system uh, to uh, address infection control concerns and to prevent us from breaking the uh, PEEP or the pressurized uh, ventilator circuit um, and potentially compromising a patient's condition. Now, another thing that some of these closed suction systems come with, this one, this one that I have has it, is an extra 
corrugated tubing here that has a 15 millimeter adapter. And this is really handy because you can see all this here is, it, this doesn't move around a whole lot and it can kind of be problematic. So what you can do is you can take this here, this 15 millimeter adapter will attach to the end of the endotracheal tube like so. And then I can pull that out a little bit and that just gives me a little more flexibility. And then I can attach the bag valve mask and grab that peep valve, put the peep valve on, right? And that just gives me a little, little more flexibility, right? To move around, be a little more flexible. Um, you don't have to use it, but if you have it, it's kind of a nice, nice little addition there.